All right, let's see if we can get through a build here. First, we'll start with the nose cap. Take, you notice there's a notch here and there's a notch there. Align those up as best you can by eye. Then taking a spare piece of filament, thread it through in order to hold that plate in place. And then take the two little screws and put them into their mount, their holes. There's little holes there for them. Get that good and snug. plates now in place you can take the alignment pin out when you print the hinge this is going to be the hinge we're going to install but when you print the hinge first uh, off the printer it's not going to be um, bending for you because it's a live uh, printed hinge and the pivot point needs to be broken free so what you do is you work it slowly back and forth Eventually, it becomes free. And if you're not careful, it breaks. So I was a little too vigorous with that. But this is what you're going for. As you can see, when you do it right, you have a nice printed hinge point. You take that and with the notch pointing upwards, slide it into the hole into the nose cap, uh, the, the top of the, the lander. You then insert that into the notch there and you take your piece of filament for hinge pin and slide that through. Sometimes it takes a little working to get it just right. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work. There we go. And once it's in place, the pin will pretty much stay in place. You might want to flatten the end so it sticks a little better. Now this edge here, because you printed the top in this orientation, this edge here might need some cleanup. So get a deburring tool and clean that up. When you're done, it should snap on pretty much like that and pop off very readily. Nose cap needs to be able to slide up and down the channel that the hinge sits in. There might be some resistance to it depending on your printer's results, but in the end what you want is a nose cap that slides out and then hinges back. So this is the action you're looking for to a nice quick slide out and hinge back. This allows the chute to come out. That piece is done. Uh, let's start preparing the legs. The legs go into the base this way. You can see there's a notch to the axle point and these are notched as well. So they drop in and they notch in place and you take the spring and you hook it over the end of the leg. And then you hook the other one to the post. Sometimes it, it's a little tricky, but after a while you get used to, the, to doing it. And ta-da, there we have one spring in place. And you might want to work this a little bit, depending on, you don't want to work it too much, obviously, because if you go too high, it'll pop out. But uh, it might, because of the print, you might have to work that a little bit. And then you would take and put your foot on and drive a pin through there. 
and that will hold it in place. Now you can choose to glue that in place if you wish. Then there's the support struts. These little guys are you know, for looks, but um, you know, they, need, they look cool. They probably add to some stability. You can notice that there's um, I use filament again for the axle pieces here. And that's basically one leg in place, ready to fly. We'll go around and quickly do all the others. And you can pin these any number of ways. Basically, the best approach is to feed the filament through and then cut it off right at the base, like so. And if you don't glue that, it should stay, first of all. But if you don't glue that, it'll allow you to repair it later if necessary. So that's basically done. Okay, one thing you're going to need to do in order to strengthen the spring pegs is to put a little piece of filament into the holes that you'll have seen printed into each of the pegs. This gives it extra strength. Because printing horizontally gives it a little extra weakness, this helps to strengthen those mounts to uh, give you a little bit more durability. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the motor mount into the center. The motor mount, I'm showing you this one. This is a test version of it. Uh, my concern was that there was going to be a heat issue. One of the reasons why I went with the paper tube was also to help uh, manage the heat a little bit better. That's why this is really open. That's why there's all these little um, raised edges in order to keep the paper tube off of the plastic directly to help the heat ventilate. So when you put this assembly together here, let's see, here it is. Uh, you're gonna, first of all, of course, you're gonna wanna cut a notch for the um, engine hook. And if you look down at the bottom here, you can see there's a slot for the engine hook. You push the tube in all the way till it stops. Um, oh, I sort of skipped a step there. This is the motor block. I uh, made my own motor block just because I didn't have any immediately handy, but you might have uh, motor blocks available. So basically, motor block pushes down to the top of the engine hook and you glue it in place there. And if when you put go to put this into the airframe, you should, I think white glue, I'm pretty sure I've had uh, white glue work with success. You can white glue this in, CA glue it in, but you want that motor hook to have some freedom to it. And so that's pretty much ready. Now there's one approach that I'm thinking of I'd like to try with the recovery. You see these little holes here. These allow me to hook into the motor, the top of the motor mount with this paper clip that I have bent in a very particular way. See the paper clip's got a couple of hooks to it. And the hooks lead down into these holes and basically swing upwards like so and you can take and bend that for more security you can bend that over so there's less of a chance of it coming unhooked it's not going to come unhooked anyway and the other thing i was thinking is you take this um, steel sponge like it's very similar to what air tech uses um, for their recovery uh, baffles and you just put that right there and on top of this you can attach 
your Kevlar string. You can either use Kevlar string, which should be more than adequate for this purpose, or this other stuff, Vanta thread, which is supposed to be the world's, world's strongest thread. I'm not sure how heat resistant that is, but Kevlar should be. Anyway, you would tie the Kevlar string to that component there. You have your piece of BT-60. You insert that over it. And now we lock the top of the rocket into place. And you can see here there are holes for the ladder. So you turn this 90 degrees of those holes and, and it locks right into place. All the holes should line up for the ladder. And at this point, this is, you know, you don't, you don't need to glue the BT-60 tube. It should be secure enough in there. So, uh, you can glue in a um, launch lug here and here, but I think these holes should be more than adequate size to facilitate a launch lug. The ladder, when you print the ladder, there'll be little holes for all the filament pegs. And let me explain why I'm using filament pegs. When you print horizontally in 3D, you basically create an inherent weakness in any structure. So you can't really print little pins like that with any strength. But keeping the filament intact gives you a good, strong, as strong as the plastic can be. Um, and this then uh, allows you to build little pegs like this. And as you can see, they just, they just push into place. You might need to drill little holes here into the top of the uh, capsule, the crew cabin. And the reason being is that I'm, a couple of times I tried printing this and the alignment wasn't exactly right. That's because the stop isn't always exactly right. There's a lot of minor shifts that occur in printing. So you sort of get used to that after a while. But um, the drilling those holes facilitates getting that uh, to work better. And it also locks the upper crew cab in place. Now this is a 24 inch chute for what it's worth. And I think that there's ad adequate space for a 24 inch chute in there anyway. So there is that aspect of it. And now finally, when you go to put a motor in, let's see, I don't have, I can use this as a stand in. And this is like your standard 24 millimeter motor. I made this 24 millimeter because I wanted to have the option to go with like a D12, but you probably would be better running a um, 18 millimeter uh, APD. Uh, I think that would probably give you a better end result, uh, initial thrust, thrust curve. Anyhow, you push this in until it locks and you line that notch there with that and then there's a little another one last screw here and you screw that little sucker into place and that will help keep the nozzle in place i am not sure how well this is going to hold up to the heat of the end of the engine firing uh, that's why I don't want to attach the nozzle permanently. I'd like to have the option of replacing it or not flying with it. You can fly without it. It probably won't look as cool like flying a Mercury without the tower on it. But um, it's very likely the heat from the motor will warp this. We'll see. I mean, we won't know until we test fly it. I think that basically covers the full construction of the, the lander. As you can see, it's got a nice recovery to it. And this is the uh, base I made. That's actually the swoop out of um, SpaceX. And you can see there's a place to put um, filament in here if you want to make that a little bit stronger. But this drops in, locks in place, and that slot fits into this slot. And you have your stand. So who's going to get to be the first one to fly one? We'll see. It's certainly, unfortunately, not going to be me. But um, 
with any luck, it will fly well. The rock sim indicates that it will, but um, I've had rock sim not be correct in the past. I hope this has been helpful, and I hope you enjoy your SpaceX Mars lander, and um, I'm looking for feedback. Thanks a lot.